to natural possibilities there are human inventions there are human capabilities there are human ingenuity that we are exposed to so when you live as an african there are possibilities that are more at home with africans when you look at sports for instance and then you see the power sports sports that involve so much use of power force the africans seem to do so well around that area because it does seem like they are exposed to this possibility of force but we see other possibilities that has to do with tact for instance how many black men do you see who win so much wet medals in swimming gymnastics calisthenics snowboarding you ask which snow do you have to be able to ex be exposed to such possibilities so you see there are human possibilities but we are also exposed to spirit possibilities for those of us who are christians eternal possibilities possibilities that god is unveiling to us day by day if we are yielded in recent time I, I, I've, I've been showing again and again to you that scripture in daniel chapter 10 verse 20 when the angel showed up daniel had been praying for 21 days and then eventually this angel showed up and said from day one you started prayer eternal possibility was opened over you eternal portal was opened over you so it means one of the things we need to do to activate eternal portals is to come into consistent and continuous prayer when there is a sustained prayer concerning a matter did you hear me when there is a sustained prayer concerning a matter it's like you are you got a hammer and you want to bring down this wall and then there is a continuous heat on the wall if you do it continuously and consistently hitting the same spot you are weakening it but if you are hitting at diverse places you are not focused you are you are not directional but if you hit at the same spot again and again and again and again before you know what you will watch it crumble glory to god that's how prayer when there is a continual sustained prayer concerning a matter it will eventually cave into you so the angel showed up to daniel daniel chapter 10 verse 20 and he said prior to that he said from the beginning of your prayer heaven heard you but you see the prince of Persia, which is a possibility in the spirit In the natural, there's a natural king reigning, reigning over the land of Persia. In the spirit, the person that powers the natural king, that powers his thinking, his, his mindset is the prince. The way, the way you folks are looking at me tonight, it feels like pastor is speaking in Greek and Hebrew. So, let me break down this Greek and Hebrew because as I'm this is nothing even i've not even started i've not even started introduction into what i want to teach but the way you're looking at me feels like don't even go deep into this thing at all so let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 from verse from verse 1 and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air did you see this according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience the bible calls him the prince and the bible says he functioned by the power of the air and the scripture says he is a spirit that now function in all children of disobedience So the angel said there was a prince of Persia. Paul says there is a prince of the power of the air. He is the one that gives life, gives spirit, gives gives um, um, mindset and understanding to the prince that function in diverse location. 
the angel told Daniel he said after I leave you now he said I have fought the prince of Persia or oh, oh, sorry when I leave you I will fight the prince of Persia he said and after that the prince of Gracia or, with, or Greece will come Paul now began to give us clarity here that what it shifts your identity it begins to describe your reality there are people in the bible you don't know them by name you know you know them by their circumstance you will say the lame man by the beautiful gate what's his name what's his father's name you will say blind Bartimaeus. even though you know his name you must add blindness to it you will ask the lord tonight that the Lord God Almighty will bring you a visitation that will alter your situation. A visitation that will alter your situation. Go ahead and talk to God tonight. Bring me a visitation that will alter my circumstance. That will alter my situation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, bring me a visitation that is life altering. It alters my reality. It alters my situation it alters my circumstance in the name of the Lord Jesus in Jesus mighty name we have prayed we will ask the Lord finally that he will scripture says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they shall be filled if you're hungry tonight go ahead and say father quench my hunger let me quench my thirst satisfy my hunger in the name of the lord jesus quench my thirst satisfy my hunger quench my thirst satisfy my hunger in the name of jesus i have come quench my thirst satisfy my hunger quench my thirst satisfy my hunger quench my thirst and satisfy my hunger adaya bala to koti bele mene di godo bodo bala bada da bata deke bele mene no tabila dada tabila dada kapala dada kapala bada dada du je brende kabada kapata bala ba kapata e kabada kapete bele bida indo da kabala mana na 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 lord i hunger lord i hunger satisfy my hunger quench my thirst in the name of jesus blessed are they who hunger and thirst lord i hunger and thirst tonight that my thirst be quenched my hunger be satisfied 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 in the name of jesus all right so i was talking to you about possibilities that exist in the natural realm and exist in the supernatural realm and there are possibilities in the satanic realm such that the angel was telling daniel from the one you began to pray there's a possibility such that demonic forces can contend for that which you're praying for that's why of all the armor that we are given as the armor of our warfare every one of them is defensive but only one has capability for defense and offense which is the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praise god so the continuous speaking of God's word is what you need to pull down the walls that are erected against your possibilities. So the Bible tells us that there is the prince of the power of the air who now walks in the children of disobedience. Whether those children are in church or outside of church, the Bible says what powers the reality is the prince of the power of the air and that prince of the power of the air now designate authority to princes over nations and over localities so there is a prince over nigeria there is a prince over lagos there is a prince over Ilukweju. all of these are the spirit that powers the atmosphere that powers the character and the behavior of people if for you to know this you need to travel from land to land only to realize that although every land is peopled by human beings 
but the character and behavior of every land is not alike it's not alike years ago myself and some friends were going for a ministration in a certain state and I wouldn't want to mention the state so someone warned us already said those people are very violent said they are very violent to be careful with them I mean I feel like how can they people be very violent and you just know them he said they are very violent so we got to the park a makeshift park by the way just by the road where they were picking people and those guys had kept us in the vehicle for almost about an hour and we had to tell them sorry passengers are not coming you are not willing to go we're in a hurry where we're going is time bound so you had to please let us go the guy says we are not moving an inch the guy said we will remain in that vehicle till whenever it's filled up or whenever they choose to move I, you know young people will want to so whether one or two of us will try to say you can't do that I, 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 I had to whisper to you remember they told us that these guys are violent we are in their land oh, please let's so I'm persuaded truly there are princes that powers how community think how they behave how they do what they do the same thing you must know that we have a reality in the spirit the archangel said he is sent to minister to Daniel in the same vein we have angels that are sent to minister to us Jesus Christ was driven of the spirit into the wilderness to pray and to fast and after that the Bible said angels minister to him how many of you know that angels minister to him oh come on how many of you know that the Bible says we have angels that are ministering to us guiding angels I remember that I was preaching in a campus and they put me in the room of one of the students so I sat there that afternoon preparing myself prepping myself for the evening session just meditating I wasn't praying I was meditating I opened scripture up to today I can remember vividly the scripture I was reading about John the Baptist who did you go to the wilderness to see a reed shaken by the wind that was a scripture I was meditating upon and that lady obviously I think she must be a friend to the young man that owned naturally owned the room she just ran into the room and then she ran out screaming so yeah I felt oh she felt she was rude she must have just bumped on, on their guest minister so I was calling her no 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 no. you can come you can come but she kept screaming you are not alone you are not alone you are not alone so I said come 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 she said as I rushed in I saw two angels with you I saw two angels I said calm down I said you know your challenge next time you have learned the lesson not to just bump on anybody before angels slap you <laughs> I said I was meditating preparing myself when you just bump she didn't even do the courtesy of knocking you know that's how rude some people could be no matter how friendly you are with someone that person may just be stuck naked in the room and you just bump on the person but all we needed was that I had a reality that I was interfacing which was angelic ministration where she bumped on me listen to me child of God you have realities in the spirit I know you are so used to natural reality some of you you know how you know the certifications you've acquired you know the natural knowledge you have you know the natural capability some of you are gifted in craftsmanship gifted in diverse areas you have conquered all this we need to begin to know that we are gifted and powered in the spirit realm too it is time to begin to know there are realities in the spirit realm that you and I should press into press into realities in the spirit realm Mary was a young virgin she was a teenager a young lady who could press into the reality of seeing angels the same angel that appeared to her and she could relate with him was the same angel that appeared to Zachariah and got him dumb because he was questioning man of God was questioning the angel So you now understand why Psalm 24 says, lift up your heads from verse 7. Lift up your heads, O you gates. What is he saying? He's saying, portals open up for me. Eternal portals open up. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be thou lifted up, you everlasting doors that are eternal.
eternal doors, eternal portals. Listen, there are portals that lead into eternal realities. Gates that lead into things that natural people cannot understand. So, remember the story I once told you here. Al W. Schoenberg said he used to have this man bring his daughter to church. This man will never step into church. He said he doesn't know the quarrel the man has with God. He will bring his daughters because she won't let him be. So in the morning, he drives her, brings her to church. One of those days, R.W. Shambach, the man of God, stood in front of the man and told the man, come down and join us in church. The man said, you clear off my way. He almost ran. When a man almost ran over a man of God, the man of God had to jump off. Not too long later, R.W. Shambach was in another city preaching when they called in an emergency that lady had an accident and her eyeball is broken blood all over blood all over the eyeball broken but she kept saying i want to see my pastor take me to my pastor she was in the hospital so she kept saying her pastor so it was then the father pulled a call across and we're talking about years ago when it was on the days of gsm pulled a cross across the house somehow linked the man of god and then man of god said he's taking the next available flight he's coming he's coming and when man of god got into the hospital he went straight to the reception and the doctors were saying that's not where the problem is man of god said you guys don't even know where the problem is this the problem is with that scoundrel called her father he didn't go straight to the lady he went to the father and felt like how come you're calling me he said your daughter needs you he said you will get right with the law before we talk about the daughter and of course the man went on his knee quickly singing i surrender all and after that, Chambak said, we can now go to where the problem is. Shall we, we used to anoint ourselves with oil and just touch you and touch the oil and touch you. Chambak used to, he uses the oil without reservation. Chambak went to the girl in the hospital ward. He opened his bottle of oil, prayed and poured it on her. And then he did something crazy. Guess what he did? Before he did that, the doctor said, please do your thing so that we can do our thing. They want to wheel her into the theater to see how they can seal up. You understand? Because the eyeball is broken. Shambak poured the oil on her. He said, take off, the band take off the bandage and plaster. Take it off. By the time they took it off, a new eyeball has been formed. And the doctor screamed, oh my God, I can't believe my eyes. And Shambak said, that's your problem. You live by sight. Now you can't believe your sight. You live your realities are physical realities you live by sight we don't live by sight we live by eternal realities listen to me these things won't happen if you don't unlock them if you don't press into it that sister was in worry her pastor normally who is in worry was in another was at work and then he linked me up on whatsapp call we linked her up in worry even before she got married there was already sat you know there are certain tests they do before where they understand she has so 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 okay it has, we have to be treating this this uh, health issue but she wasn't getting getting pregnant and she said pastor if you and pastor this one can pray for me i believe god will answer we we're praying that night suddenly when we just had her fell all we could hear was distant amen amen phone had fallen somewhere she had fallen somewhere when she got up we we're done with the done with the prayer she said pastor say do i throw away the medicine say pastor just let me throw it away she was the one saying and i told pastor i said this your daughter has gotten a miracle already her faith was contagious it was i mean you can't tell nine months later she has a baby praise god forevermore there are realities that we can press into if we will drop shenanigans there are too many people in the church who don't know the realities that are opened to them are you listening to me he said lift up your head so you gaze and be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors that the king of glory may come in he said who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory let me open you up to certain scriptures tonight genesis in chapter 28 let's start from there Genesis in chapter 28 from verse 11. So the Bible says concerning Jacob. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. 
he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and on top reached heaven and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it so can I ask you a question what is the length of that ladder that can touch the heaven from the earth and what company manufactured the ladder I need to buy it because I want to climb to heaven too there is no human ladder so the, 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 the best way they could describe that eternal reality was to use the word ladder is actually a portal it was a gateway that was open angels don't actually need a ladder to access the earth you understand me when he says he saw the heavens open and an, a, and a ladder it was simply a revelation it was simply saying portals was open and this man could access heaven let's read for and finish it up 13 and behold the lord stood above it and said I am the Lord, God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac. The land which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Now you can understand the battle of Israel with Philistines. He said, this land which you lay in, I'll give it to you. Or with Palestine, rather, presently. Behold, the, the land which you... you Yes, I'll give to your descendants the land which you lie. I'll give to your descendants. And also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And will bring you back to this land. Said, I'll bring you back. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place I did not know it and he was afraid and said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of God this is the gate of heaven he called it the gate he's saying this is the portal this is the access way to heaven in his own little way at the time he lived in he felt heaven was tied to a singular place but you and I, by our own eternal reality today, know that from wherever we are, we can unlock portals and access heaven. Praise God. This was Jacob unlocking portal. He lay there for the night. Boom! The heavens was opened over him and he could access some new reality. Someone say in the name of Jesus Christ, the heaven is open over my life. As from tonight, I access new realities that are not available to natural men. I begin to access new realities in the name of Jesus. So when you pay attention to Revelation in chapter 4, so we just left Genesis which is the first book. Let's jump to Revelation which is the last book. Revelation in chapter 4. I'll show you from King James and after that I'll show you from the Passion Translation. Revelation in chapter 4 uh, verse 1. King James first of all. After that we're going to look at Passion. If you have Passion please get ready to read out Revelation in chapter 4 verse 1 to me tonight. I read and I quote After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. I looked and he saw a portal he saw a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was like the trumpet speaking with me saying come up here i will show you things which must take place after this immediately i was in the spirit and behold the throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne this man began to access eternal spiritual realities how by the opening of a portal who has the passion translation what did he say then suddenly after i wrote down this message i saw a heavenly portal opened before me and the same trumpet voice i heard speaking with me at the beginning the silence and said 
ascend. Listen, it says ascend into this realm. All I'm seeking to do tonight is to get you to ascend into new realms. It's to get you. I'm saying you have mastered the natural realm already. Can we just ascend into new realms? Can we press into new realities? Can we come into new understanding? Can we come into new, new know-how in God? Can we, can we break free from the hold of the mundane? Can we tell ourselves I'm yielded and available? I really do not intend to say this, but just allow me to say it. So I had to tell many sisters, I know most of you, most in this generation, anytime you think about a calling, you are thinking about how to wear powerful clothes, powerful makeup, and tell sisters that you need to look good, you need to look good, you need to look good, you need to look good. Or you tell them how to love their husband. Catherine Kuhlman is a woman like you. She wasn't telling people about how to look good and how to love their husband. Stop making it look like women are called to teach things. Men are called to teach eternal realities. You need to understand that if you if you yield yourself to eternal stuff, you will teach eternal stuff. Irrespective of your gender. The Holy Ghost is not male or female. The Holy Ghost is available for all genders. All what God wants is yielded vessels. John the beloved was open to this reality. We can talk about, we can go on and on and talk about a lot of people in the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. Paul said, I know a man 14 years ago who was caught up in the spirit. He was caught up. He said, either in body or out of body, I cannot tell, but I know such a man. He said, I would rather boast about such a man. By the way, Paul was talking about himself. He just needed to be modest about it, so he veiled it. But Paul was saying, I had experiences that opened portals before me. It was, you know, the same Paul on his way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 when he saw that light that was brighter than the noonday sun. Boom! And he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why persecutors down me? Portals opened over him. Or do we need to talk about Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3? When you read 1 Kings in chapter 3, let's read it. Let's read 1 Kings in chapter 3 from verse 3. Portals opened over the life of Solomon. First Kings in chapter 3 from verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statute of his father, David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar at Gibeon. The Lord appeared to Solomon after he offered that sacrifice boom, portals were open and the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and God said ask what I shall give you and Solomon said you have shown great mercy to your servant David my father because he walked before you in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you you have continued the great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on the throne as it is this day now oh lord my god you have made your servant king instead of my father david but i am a little child i do not know how to go out and to come in and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people too numerous to be numbered and counted therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that i may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge these great people of yours look at let's skip for time's sake to verse 15 and in verse 15 then solomon awoke but well, let me just read 14 so if you walk in my ways to keep my statute and commandment as your father david walked i will lengthen your days verse 15 then solomon awoke and indeed it had been a dream and it no let me read 13 there's something i missed out in verse Okay, 13. I will also give you. Okay, from 12. Behold, I have done according to your words, seeing I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been any like you before you, nor shall any be like arise after you. I will also give you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall none, there shall be there shall be not there shall be not anyone like you among the kings all your days. God said because you didn't ask for the death 
of your enemies but to start with it was sacrifice he made to god portals open before him so apart from prayer now we see sacrifices sacrifices and that's why romans chapter 12 verse 1 says i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies to god as living sacrifice when you offer yourself as living sacrifice portals open before you when you are a yielded vessel sold out committed his will and bidding is all you seek to do he will unlock portals he will unlock realities he press into realms that are amazing and strange to people what did jacob do that he pressed into this reality it was simply obedience of course he had he had wronged his brother and he had to leave the house as fugitive and his mother said go to my brother Laban and then he obeyed by that singular obedience don't forget before then a prophecy had been hanging over his head when God said Jacob have I loved Esau have I hated it was not about natural emotional hatred it was like saying I chose this reality over this reality God knew if you see from the beginning Jacob was a man of the plain he was a man of the home Esau was a man of the wild who chose picked ways of hunting so God is saying by the reality which you, you two of you represent I have chosen this reality over this and as soon as he walked in obedience if he had remained in the house God will not open him to that thing but when he walked on his way to Laban he was alone in the night Boom! God opened it up opened him up by obedience to pot house in the spirit when you walk in obedience when you walk in consistent prayer when you walk in sacrifice you are not all out for what you can what you can get you are all out because you are sold out and yielded to god portals open over you praise god so we are seeing how portals open to solomon new realities he pressed into amazingly all of these people jacob solomon they pressed into these realities in dreams but you found out that these dreams were encounters with a pot house opened up jacob woke up to said wow a dream but i saw god a dream but god gave me specific and definite instructions the same thing solomon woke up he found out a dream but the definite instruction but the dreams you have is that they are always feeding you with shawarma that's your dream I bring you good news get up go and buy shawarma and eat and then you see people come to pastors with strange dreams asking for interpretation it's not every dream that deserves interpretation some dreams where your carelessness So the question is pastor how can we press into these realities i started by telling you a life of obedience when you walk in obedience trust me you will press into this reality portals will open before you when you live a sacrificial life you are a yielded vessel sold out to him portals layers of portals will open before you when you are prayerful portals you will access portals and the next thing i want to add when you have a walking living and walking relationship with the holy ghost some of us don't even know the holy spirit years ago i used to allow some jehovah witness folks to come around my house when they come i'll open the door to them we will sit down so pastor jimmy used to wonder what is it you want to learn from them in my mind it's not your business so i sit with them and then we'll just talk bible until one day when they got on my nerve they said the holy spirit is a force of creation i said sorry i said hello they said hi i said what did you say they said trinity is false that the, i said how about the holy spirit they say it's a force i said it's a force and jesus christ taught, taught us to baptize in the, in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit 
I said, he's a force. And I hear him speak to me. I have had him lead, lead me accurately. I have healed the sick by the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, hey, 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 get up. Leave my house. I said, you guys know I'm not violent. I accept you. I don't quarrel with you. I said, we reached a place where at this thing, I cannot. See, imagine someone. You are 30 years old. And someone is telling you, you are not, you are not male. You are not female. That you are a gender that you have not known all your life. You will sit down and listen to the person. Or the name you are born all your life. The person comes and tells you that name is not your name. That actually he's your father's brother's uncle's sister's son. That he knows you more than you. I said I've had a relationship. You can bamboozle those who don't have a relationship with him. I have a relationship with him. It will be wrong for me to sit down and watch you blaspheme the Holy Ghost here. After that day we used to greet ourselves in the street. When we meet we wave. But we can't sit down to relate again because of the Holy Ghost. John in chapter 16. John in chapter 16 from verse 13. The Bible says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Ghost is our tour guide. He will be the one that will bring us into unveiling and opening portals so you need to have a living and active relationship with him listen you can't conveniently live in sin and have a relationship with the holy ghost i mean you can't be a honorary member of sinners club and have a living and active relationship with him so sin will keep you away from having a relationship with the holy ghost or the holy ghost will keep you away from sinning You've got to choose one. So I hear people say, no, 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 no. So, uh, Christianity is, 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 uh, is fake. So I pray, 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 pray. God do not answer me. Why will he answer? The Bible says he is the God. The Holy Ghost is the God of this dispensation. Jesus was going. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will send you another comforter who will be with you forever. You refuse to have a relationship with him. Now you say Christianity is fake. What manner of, what manner of phone do you have? Will you buy that will not have a charger? Because there will be times when your battery will run flat. The charger will power you back on. That's what the Holy Ghost does for us. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Having a relationship with Him. Interfacing with Him. Letting Him lead you. So the scripture says, when He, the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will... He will glorify me for he will take of mine and declare it to you that's what he says he will guide you into all truth he will not speak of himself he will not glorify himself he will take of mine and he will give it to you you need to have a living and active relationship with the holy ghost so when you come into living and active relationship with the holy ghost there are five portals that are eternal that you can have access to the first eternal portal is called the portal of sight. Listen up. When you want to press into eternal realities, a good number of these things you need to see. Joshua led the people to the walls of Jericho. Jericho was neck tight, locked up to heaven. Here God says, see, there is a reality beyond that wall. You need to see beyond it. Are you listening to me? A woman was sharing the testimony of her younger brother with me today whose wife just gave birth he said out of the first can they did three three initial can said you are expecting a daughter three scan it was the final one that said a son and when he gave birth it was a son so naturally three against one which one would you believe three he said majority carries the vote well listen to me when god is involved majority at time may be non-entity and it is possible you have walked with Jesus yet you still walk in unbelief after all Jesus Christ pastored Judas Judas still went to hell he pastored Thomas so at times the atmosphere of a church is not just the responsibility of the pastor it's the cooperation of the members Jesus Christ went to his hometown he couldn't do much miracle 
Was he not anointed? Yes, he is. Because they were not cooperative. Thomas, Jesus pastored him and Jesus led. Thomas said, except I see, I will not believe. Which lesson note was Thomas speaking from? It could not have been Jesus' lesson note. There's a portal of sin. Back to Revelation chapter 4. Let me prove it to you. He says, after these things, I looked and behold, a door stood open in heaven. I looked so he could see. As he looked, the portal of sight was open to him. He was no longer seen in the natural. Your eyes have mastered how to see naturally. It is time to begin to power your eyes to see into the spirit realm. It's time to begin to lay hands on your eyes and say you are conquered in natural realm. Bless God for you. But can you now see into the spirit realms? In 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 9 He that is now called a prophet used to be called a seer. A seer. He had ability to see. In Proverbs chapter 20 verse 12 the hearing ears and the seeing eyes is from the Lord. So you need to begin to ask that the Lord should give you a seeing eyes. It's not the eyes that is looking for sin to commit. So Jonah said, sorry, Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at the maiden. Kings were at battle. David sat down in his balcony and was looking at people's wives. His life never remained the same. So when we say see, we are not saying it's not about how big your eyeballs are. So you just open your eyeballs, poking your eyes into everybody's affair. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about ability to see into the realms of the spirit. The Holy Ghost will make you see things naturally you couldn't see. So we are pressing, we are activating, we are activating the portals of sight, the portals of sight in the name of Jesus Christ, that your eyes are, are open to see beyond the natural. If you don't power your eyes, they will forever see only natural things. You need to place hand on your eyes and say, eyes hear the word of the Lord. You have mastered the natural. It is time to begin to embrace the supernatural. Place your hand upon your eyes quickly. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to these eyes of mine. They have conquered the natural. From today, we activate you. You must begin to see new realities. You must begin to access new possibilities. You are hands designed to see into the spirit. Some of you, you prayed it, you didn't believe it because you still like your eyes only seeing natural things the second reality is called the portal of sound the portal of sound listen a young man was born he couldn't speak and the doctor said his problem didn't start with inability to speak he said his problem started with inability to hear. He said if you can't hear, you can't speak. He said it is what you hear that teaches you how to learn how to speak. And how to hear, practicing of hearing starts with ability to discern sound. So when they want to know whether children can hear, behind them they just tap a sound. It is the power of sound. Ability to hear. Proverbs 20, 12 said, hearing ear. In the same Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 we were reading. And I heard a voice like the sound of a trumpet. So he wasn't just powering the portal of seeing. He also powered the portal of hearing. Hearing ears were given him. Proverbs, John chapter 10 verse 27. My sheep, they hear my voice. What voice are you hearing? Listen, we are too busy focusing in the, on the world. That's why we can't hear God. Who you focus on determines who you hear. When you are focused on the world, you can hear God. When you are focused on his word, you will become a wonder to your world. For you to be his spokesman. The man that became a spokesman for God, a prophet, is simply a spokesman. He first was a seer. Place your hand on your ears. Saying in the name of Jesus. My ability to hear is activated. 
eternal portals of hearing is activated over my life in the name of Jesus I will hear I will walk by hearing of the what the spirit is saying in the name of Jesus so we have portals of hearing why did the Bible say let him that have ears hear what the spirit is saying to the church it means not all that have ears can hear he say if you have here you better hear so in the name of jesus your hearing is activated Amen. you are not hearing natural things you're hearing eternal things Amen. it was young Gicho. he's going to be with the lord he said in his church he just finished preaching a powerful sermon and, and someone walked up to him and said wow what a sermon sir powerful time he said sir whilst you are preaching god spoke to me i said what did god say he said God told me to go and start a beer parlor. And young Gichu said, that's the devil speaking to you. That's not God. So people at times, they confuse what the devil is saying for what God is saying. From today, you will hear distinctive sound. You will discern who is speaking. Amen. Glory to God. Number four, sorry, number three rather, is the portal, the portal of speaking. Someone says speaking. It's called utterance. The portal of utterance. Enable men to speak the mind of God. Utterance. Prophecy is utterance. Word of knowledge is utterance. Word of wisdom is utterance. When God gives you ability, he said, don't plan ahead what you will say. He said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say. They can't question it. You are not speaking by what you learned in the university. You're speaking by the utterance. Acts in chapter 2 verse 4. He said, they all began to speak in unknown tongue as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. The Holy Ghost gives utterance. He shall give utterance. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. Paul says, pray for me that the door, the portal of utterance may be given to me. That portals of utterance, portals to declare the counsel of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. Paul says, an effectual door of ministry has been opened to me. It's a portal for utterance. It's a portal for the work of ministry. It's a portal to speak the truth. Because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. And the Holy Ghost gives utterance. First Corinthians chapter 1. And then verse number 5. I want us to look at it. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. It says that you were enriched in everything by him, in all utterance and in knowledge. He said you were enriched in everything. You are also enriched in utterance. Place your hand upon your mouth in the name of Jesus. I am enabled not to speak falsehood. I am enabled not to speak lies. I am enabled. Hot coal is placed upon my mouth like it was done to Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse, in, in, I mean in Isaiah chapter 6. Father, we receive hot coal upon our lips. We receive accuracy in utterance. In the name of Jesus, God is powering our speech. He's powering our words. He's powering our words. Our words carry power. In the name of Jesus, God gives utterance. You can't have utterance and want to lie. You can't have utterance and speak to please people. Some of you, that's why at best, no matter how anointed you are, you will end up as a man of the people, as a lady of the people. Because you can't speak for God when you speak for crowd to like you. When they needed to lie against Paul, they got a special man who could lie. He was an orator. He had his calling was to lie. Come and help us tell lie against this one. You can't have a relationship with the Lord and you are powered to lie. Yesterday, my boy did something at home. He had stepped into a toilet to use it and he broke something mistakenly. And then because as parents will be angry when they spoil things. And then because we keep teaching, especially the younger one, keep teaching him not to lie. And then he had come to me to say, Daddy, I mistakenly broke something. And me, I'm angry. I just say, just, 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 just go. That's one way of not beating him. In his innocence. <laughs> he still carried his big head and went to his mother. I have broken and the mother dragged him there. <laughs> and I said, I but me that told you to go. 
I am the head of the home. Go you, you, until you went to where you receive pity. Praise God. It was in his innocence because why? He's trying not to tell a lie. Brethren, let's try not to tell lies too. See, he said, We all lie. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You are going to offend me. You are the one that knows what you gain from lying. Some of us have stopped. You are the one that know the reward you get. Because people, you see thieves, you say, Ole ni bokowa, ni tobamu ni barawo. Sorry, sorry. We are not all thieves. You are the one that knows what you have seen in stealing. You know, a woman was in her office and her colleague said, all men cheat. And she said, no, my husband does not. And they all laughed at her. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when she sits at home now, she'll be looking at her husband. So with all this niceness this guy is doing, so he's secretly cheating. Why? When you listen to a Hitler, you will kill a Jew. Be careful who you listen to. I mean, choose, choose. God, you're hearing so much that you choose who you listen to. There are certain things once they start, you can tell where they will end. Just say. If I see a witch kill someone in my presence and drink the person's blood, and after that I read the Bible, and the Bible says, witch cannot kill someone and eat the blood. I will not believe what I saw. I will believe what the Bible says. Because what you see are transient and temporary and are not real. The real thing is the word of God. Every other thing will pass away except the word of God. We must learn not to live by sight. We must learn to live by the spirit. So what's the fourth portal? Is the portal of your mind. Beyond visions of the eyes. Some of you don't know there are visions of the mind. Ability to see pictures in the mind. Images in the mind. Ability to Paul go to Ephesus. He says that the eyes of your mind may be illuminated. That's how he puts it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your mind. Romans in chapter 12, verse 2. He says, Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Your mind is so important, it has to be renewed. In Luke chapter 24 verse 45 Jesus Christ opened their understanding understanding takes place in the realm of the mind he opened their understanding that they may understand scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 be renewed in the spirit of your mind in the spirit of your mind God wants your mind yielded because there are portals in the mind seated and God is bringing you understanding to solve a problem you listen to me sitting and God is bringing you understanding that is an answer to humanity cry creatives real creatives they don't like noise what did I say people who are real content creators they don't like noise they like to stay where their understanding can pick frequencies in the spirit pick portals that are open unto them and that's why research says people who live in capital city are less creative you know why they also say to those who watch too much of televisions they are less creative your creativity is blurred by the things you see every day so each time you want to bring out something new your mind is telling you someone has done this so what they now have is sentences of what others have done so they are copying each other but when you get to where it's natural what you're getting is pure don't be a lover of noise don't be a lover of talk God, Pastor Ayo, angry. Pastor Ayo traveled all the way to to, to Badagri. He said this. He said they said he wants to give a talk. He got up and walked away. He said we don't give talk. <laughs> Our preachings and teachings are not with enticing words of human knowledge. We are not giving talk. This is not talk. We are not talkers, Christ talkers. We are not here to talk. We are speaking utterance, representing God. What we declare is power. So it's it's a portal open unto us. But these portals, your utterance will be colored when your mind is colored. 
I'll tell you this story. So I was talking to someone. I said, How about since you're you are available and this my friend is available? I'm talking about recently. Why don't you guys and you know yourselves? And you are all advanced in age. And she said, No, I can't settle with him. And then the next thing she said, he always seeks validation from people. He doesn't know how to stand by principle and value that are his. And I know she was right. I didn't talk. She said, you're not talking. I said, I can't be bad-mouthing my friend. I would rather not talk. She's right. You see, people who seek validation from people can lie on people's behalf. Hello. They can get defensive on people. If I defend him, he will like me. Listen to me. If you get validation from men, you will get discredited by men too. But if you get validation from God, only God can discredit you. So what are, what are the four portals I've told you? That must be open. Number one, sight. Number two, sound. Number three. And then, yes, mouth. And then number, number four, mind. And then what is number five? Your spirit. It's the portal of your spirit. Walk in the spirit. You will not fulfill the desire and the dictates of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. The pediatrics of Christianity says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If he can't lead you, you are not one of his so for him to lead you you must learn how to walk Christianity in Christianity we don't start by crawling we start by walking are you listening to me we start by walking baby start by crawling we start by walking he saved you standing you don't stand in the council of, of, of the scornful or in the seat of sinners and then you walk in his word we don't crawl there's no way you see crawling for the believer you are either standing you are seated or you are walking and you must be able to go beyond walking into running into soaring but we don't have crawling walk in the spirit be led by the spirit yield your spirit man how to walk in the spirit is so simple everything the bible says practice it people are wondering walking in this it's not about how many hours you pray it's about how many how much you obey talking to a pastor he said this pastor is divorced from his wife he wants to marry a daughter of mine in the church and then the next he said he's very prayerful i said don't tell me that nonsense don't tell me that nonsense did you ask how he and the wife got separated then he began to tell me a story. Please hear the story of a prayer warrior. He said, um, he said the wife was unfaithful. She used to cheat on him. And then here, here, here the next thing. Watch this, watch this. And then he used to beat her. I said a man who cannot hear the Holy Ghost. Who his natural mind tells him that the solution to a cheating spouse. Please, what book of the Bible did he say when your wife cheat on you, beat her to behave? Proverbs, right? Where in Proverbs is it? Uh -uh. Okay, maybe we say foolishness is born in the heart of a child. And the rod of correction, we. So his wife is a child, Abby. Well done, ancient of this. I said, whatever could make him have a prayer life and he's reckless enough to beat a woman that's grown up, is the same thing that will make him be led by his body and not the Holy Ghost. He can't marry your daughter. If a man who is of prayer has a cheating wife, there is one out of two things he will do. Number one, he quietly, like Joseph, let her go. Eh? Or he continued to intercede for her till she changed. But, Shamrakuta palimina nonemeni ikboa ilabada kutopaga Ah! So don't don't mind people when you see people have prayer life. Don't worry, check their life. 
in fact that they have a prayer life begin to watch their life after that you can tell whether it is fast see in those days when we were growing up in the church I'll tell you this last story I think I'm done one of the youth leader then saw me said bro this, this month for convention that is coming we need to cut bamboo to do certain designs in front of the church would you come I was not part of them so I, I said okay I will come so that day I came and then he said ah you came I said but I gave my word that I will come say ah many brethren we know so you begin to dawn on me then so there's a reality in Christianity where some people will give their word they won't keep to it the next thing he asked me I'm serious so he said when did you get born again and me I told him he said we know those who truly had encounter he said some Christians when they say good morning go and check outside it is night their words has to be discounted that's not all then suddenly they began to share bones you know bones donuts to themselves with water they said brothers won't take i said no they said ah, what i said we are fasting now they said hey, with this kind of work we are doing meaning the church declared fast and me i felt my pastor have declared a fast why should i be eating they said because we are working i said no i will do my work like that the guy kept saying it and he said those who have encounter we know them and we know amongst then he now told me another reality that took me to the story he said when you go to church during prayer and fasting you see those who are prancing around shouting and jumping he said they didn't fast he said the people that fasted they are in one corner he said we know ourselves i said oh really he said, yes so, so from that day when we are praying through that looking at some people the power of sugar is what is powering him don't power your life by sugar don't power your life by flesh power your life by spirit portals will be open before you drop your head to lay i remember i traveled from lagos to to Lokoja to preach and it was it was not directly my invitation it was a friend and the friend said ah no no this thing you are inviting me for i have a friend who can do it better pastor desmond go and do that they want move of the they want the move of the spirit so me me when i landed in local they came to carry me took me to a very as i then that was the best hotel they have put me as a guest and in my heart while i did by you this one they are spending so much on me lord i don't know what will happen i was seriously dead tired <laughs> i said Ulua. and the pastor told me say these people they won't come they won't come if they don't see anything <sighs> Ulua. see anything Bye. what what are we going to do and I'm brethren. I was begging God to wake me up to pray. Naturally, I'm tired. I should wake up by 7 a.m., take my bath, and straight to church. As I dropped my head to sleep, around 3 or 4, God had woken me up with revelation. I woke up saying, Father, thank you. At least with this one, I know that you speak to your servants. Sir, you can't spend 365 days sleeping and not seeing anything, not hearing anything, not knowing anything, not discerning anything. And at 22 and a half, you're already bringing out pot belly. And it's not that you drank water. It's that you eat too much. I watched the comedy. The guy went to beg money for house rent, 200,000. But the person that he went, met the guy in a big hotel. The guy said, ask for anything. The idiot has ordered food worth 300 or something thousand. So the man just brought 200,000 out and called waiter. First told the guy, this is 200,000 you want, but finish the food you are eating. As he was eating it with the drinks he ordered. God waiter said, all these drinks and food, how much is it? He said, 350. He said, what are Take the 200. He said, the remaining 150. Collect it from him. Thief. It's a comedy. Some people are like that. They don't have self-control. Tell them order for everything. You'll be shocked. They will order than what, more than what you, who we pay, has ordered for. And when you ask them, they will say, you know, it's free thing. Bow your heads tonight. Someone say, Father. Someone say, Father. My spirit is opened up to eternal realities. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, as from today, as from today, I am yielded. 
I hear the spirit beckoning me. I hear the spirit calling me. I hear the spirit leading me. I hear the spirit impressing upon me. In the name of Jesus, I receive discernment both in the spirit and in understanding. In the name of Jesus, as from today, I receive the obedience. I receive the sacrifice that unlock portals. That unlock portals. In the name of Jesus, for wherever you are, declare one more time, say, Father, I receive the well with all. I receive the capacity to unlock portals. Your mouth will not be sealed. Your ears will not be deaf. Your understanding will not be dull. Your sight will not be blinded. Your spirit will not be heavy. The whole of you is released to eternal possibilities. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father.